Joining us now is the brother of Paul Whelan, David Whelan. We just heard there in Mary Bruce's piece, saw a little glimpse of you there. Appreciate you joining us live here tonight. What, if anything, have you heard from the White House about the efforts to, to free your brother? We've really heard the same things that uh, most people have as far as the details of the offer that was made to the Russian government back in uh, June. Um, otherwise, we've continued to get reassurances from them even as late as, I guess it was yesterday. Um, that they are continuing to prioritize Paul's case and doing what they can. Uh, it's it's an extraordinary uh, experience to see them make the offer and now to wait and see what the Russians do to respond. Yeah, I know early on uh, you and your family had expressed some um, discontent uh, with the lack of uh, discourse or, or engagement that the, you heard from the White House with regard to, to bringing your brother home. Um, are you a little happier now with, with the way things have ramped up a bit? I, th I think that's fair to say, yes. Uh, uh, we've been at this a long time, and after a while, you begin to wonder if anybody's actually doing anything. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that our family would want to know about negotiations that were going on, but when Secretary Blinken says that there is an offer on the table and that it could lead to Paul, uh, Paul's release and Ms. Griner's as well, um, then you actually have a, an actual concrete action that the U.S. government is, has taken, and uh, that gives us hope that there may, be, may have been others and that they will, there will be others in the future if this one doesn't work. ABC News Live anchor Terry Moran talked with Trevor Reed today, who, of course, was recently exchanged as part of a deal. I want to take a listen to part of that interview. You're hopeful that this deal will go down, that the swap is going to happen? Do you think Russia is going to take it? I... I seriously hope they do. I think that they would be fools not to take a deal like this. Um, I think that it's a win-win for both sides. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't. I can't see why they would refuse to do that, um, except to, you know, to to play games with the United States or to put more pressure on the United States. But I'm, uh, you know, extremely optimistic. I'm cautiously optimistic. But he says he's optimistic nonetheless. Do you share that optimism? I do. I think that if the U.S. government has made a substantial offer that uh, President Biden himself has approved, and it's a difficult decision for him to make, then it means that they've probably made an assessment of what the Russians have asked for over the last three and a half years since Paul's arrest uh, and included that in that offer. Uh, so it, it's, it's really hard to imagine why the Russians would uh, decline that offer, even if they might negotiate around the edges a little bit more if they're able to. Um, uh, yeah, I think that there's uh, optimism if, uh, if the Russians are looking after their self-interest. Are you concerned that these negotiations becoming public might backfire, and also that this might be some kind of indication that they haven't had success with Russia, that they are now making them public? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think that the uh, it's unlikely that the negotiations themselves will continue in the public. I know that the Russians will be uh, opposed to that. They don't seem to like to do anything uh, in the public. Uh, and that they will continue to wait until the uh, trial has finished for uh, Ms. Greiner and she's either released or convicted and sentenced. Um, so I think that this may be just a, a, an announcement to let the American people know that the U.S. government is working, uh, to let the Whelans know that they are working on uh, Paul's case in particular. And, uh, and then we will see. But I think that the, the next thing we may hear about all of this may be uh, if there is a release or if the Russians announce that they have declined the offer. And I, I'm sure that you and your family are counting down the days. Today is day 1,308 of your brother's detention, which began 41 months ago today. How challenging has this all been, just day in, day out, just wearing on your family? It's, it's hard to compare to what Paul's experiencing. He is using his uh, marine training to try and survive day by day and, and not look too far ahead. And I think the rest of us are trying to follow that example of doing what we can. Uh, 16 years is a long sentence. It's corrosive uh, to family relationships, to uh, your ability to do things, your mental health, and so on. And, and so I think we just try to do the best we can each day and, and hope that eventually the, uh, the release will happen sooner than later. Any sense how your brother's doing right now, emotionally, physically? Emotionally, he seems all right. Uh, physically, he seems uh, a little bit battered. He has lost a lot of weight since his uh, arrest back in 2018, about 20% of his weight. Uh, the food has been cut back because of sanctions, so the prison is feeding him less. It's not very good food in the, uh, to start with, so uh, we're going to have to continue to supplement his uh, food so that he stays healthy as long as he can and, and hopefully uh, until he's able to come home. David Whelan, always appreciate you coming on the show. Really appreciate your time and talking with us. Thanks so much, Lindsay. I appreciate it.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.